round five with their uh, fifth round selection, 5177. We are at about what, 172, 173 right now? Yes. Uh, we are at the portion of the draft where, and we were joking about it moments ago, we're, we're in long snapper territory, place kicker territory, special sure. teams ace territory. Who knows? You could see an old lineman here, too. I mean, there's a lot of different places where you could go. But, um, again, this late in the draft, you're really throwing darts here or you're, you're, you're kind of drafting. You said special teams is an area you start to address at this point in the draft, and Belichick does it a lot. Um, let's pretend we're not looking in that direction. Are there any players out there that you're like, wow, I still really like that guy uh, and that you would you would target right now? Yeah, sure. I mean, look, there's a lot of really good talent still on the board, but when there's really good talent still on the board in the fifth round, it's usually for a reason, right? They're usually medically red flagged or there's an off-field red flag with the player. You don't see a guy like Dylan Moses, for example, from Alabama, day two tape right? Just a really athletic player, really fiery linebacker, can do multiple things, can play in space and coverage. Definitely a day two linebacker on tape. The issue is, is that he's got a really bad knee. Uh, there were some questions last year, 2020, that he might retire from football out of college because he just didn't have uh, the mental and physical tear, uh, wear and tear because of the knee issues that he's had over his career were really starting to get to him. So that's why Dylan Moses is still on the board. He's obviously the most talented player still on the board, but that's why he's still there. Similarly with a guy like Marvin Wilson, I think there's work ethic concerns there. There are sort of issues in terms of his uh, willingness and drive to get in the weight room, to get in the workout room, get down to a good playing weight. You know, these are the types of things that we're starting to get into. If you see a guy at this point that's on the board that you're like, why is that guy still on the board? It's because the NFL has figured out something to, that, that has knocked them down. You yeah. know, whether it's a medical or it's a red flag off the field or it's something like that, there's a reason why – players that we all thought were second day, day two guys are still out there. Now, some of the guys that I think are more in this range that would make sense that aren't going to be flagged for certain things, but we expected them to be available at 177. Uh, the two wide receivers I would look at are She Smith from South Carolina and Kate Johnson from South Dakota State. Both slot receiver types, shifty, good at the top of the route, good route runners, uh, put up some nice production in both their schools. So those are guys that I, I definitely would be willing at this point in the draft to take some flyers on. There's also some really good inside linebacker talent along with Moses, uh, maybe a guy like Cam McGrone out of Michigan. I don't know if he also has some sort of medical issue going on as well or something that's a allowed him to stick around. But there's a there's some plenty of talent to be had if, if the Patriots don't want to just go with their kicker or their their special teams ace or something like that right now. I mean, Stone Forsythe from my Florida is the uh, starting left tackle potential in the NFL that you could get here at 177. I really liked his tape, so maybe that's a player that they go for if they want to go with offensive tackle. They missed on that earlier on in the draft. That's a need that we've talked about ad nauseum here, maybe Stone Foresight starts to get in, into the chat right about now. I think that that's uh, sort of where I'm looking at right now if I'm going to set the table for this pick. Right. Uh, well, uh, and again, where are we right now? We are at 173, 174. 173, 174. So we've still got a bit to go um, here. Uh, is that in some of the receivers you mentioned, uh, uh, anyone that you think on uh, – you know, coming in and, and contributing in the kicking game or other places, you think actually has a shot at making the roster and making a, 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 some somewhat of an impact in year one? Because again, we talked about yeah. on our previous situation, you know, if you can draft a guy in the first couple of rounds, obviously you expect them to come in and make an impact. But given the roster, given the two tight ends, given the fact that you spent money in free agency to to to, to draft, I mean, to uh, sign Aguilar and Bourne, plus having uh, already Jacoby Myers in here and Nikhil Harry, we'll see what, if any, role he's going to have. Uh, you, you're looking at a, you know, not a lot of space here to 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 make an impact make a difference could any of these guys slot in here uh, no pun intended 
<laughs> I think somebody like Shai Smith could play right away. I think he's a polished route runner, somebody that was really impressive on tape when I watched him in terms of his understanding and knowledge of how to run routes, right? Understanding how to attack leverage or separate at the line of scrimmage or uh, move at the top of the route and out of his breaks. Kate Johnson played at a smaller level, South Dakota State, lower level of football, but at the senior bowl, he played extremely well. So maybe they feel like they can uh, look at the senior bowl tape. He had a really good wor- week of workouts there. The one name that I would definitely say, though, uh, they, they're sticking to schools that they like and schools that they know. And Seth Williams from Auburn is a six foot four outside X receiver. Now, his motor was hot and cold, right? Some, ta- some games you'd watch him and he'd go for 180 yards, right? He had, a, he had a great game last year, went for over 150, and he just looked like an absolute beast out there. Other games, his work ethic and sort of his, uh, you know, kind of motor and drive out on the football field, he, he got a little spacey, you know, he got a little spacey. Now, some people think that it had to do with the Auburn offense and the way that they run things in Auburn, and uh, Bo Nix had his struggles last year, the Auburn quarterback as well. So I think there was some frustration there from Seth Williams. Maybe they look at that and they say, okay, we can get a, a lot out of this guy. I, I think that that's something that I hope that they would look at as, as one of those receivers. Uh, Cornell Powell from Clemson is another one of those guys that I think could contribute. They don't, they're not big Clemson f- fans. They, they don't draft a ton of guys from Clemson. So I, maybe uh, that would be a little bit against the grain. But, uh, yeah, Seth, Seth Williams, I think, is somebody that could contribute right away, potentially. Uh, as uh, did, you mention, did you mention Fajoko as another person here? Yeah, so I like Fajoko, but I think he's more of a developmental guy. I'm yeah. not sure if he fits the mold of the let's contribute right away type of player. But – He's got that size speed archetype, you know, six foot four, right? Four four in the forty yard dash. That's what I mean. Is that's the guy who looks great just based off yeah. of the the, the measurable. His game, you know, look, everybody watches that tape against UCLA to watch Davis Mills, right? That was Davis Mills's breakout game. Yeah. And he threw three picks, but then he rallied them back in the fourth quarter and won the game in overtime. And that was a big one for scouts with Davis Mills, the guy that was catching the ball from Davis Mills in that game was Semi Fajoko. And he was the one that went over 150 yards and had all three of Davis Mills' touchdowns. So I think that's certainly somebody that if you want to go for upside here at this point and developmental upside, then Fajoko is interesting. That's the upside pick. Yeah. yeah. I think Seth Williams is a little bit of the upside pick, too. It it feels like Smith is a clubhouse favorite that everybody – you know, has he's the he's the you know he's the Jacoby Myers, right? He's the the technician in the slot. I don't think he's like overly explosive or fast necessarily, but yeah. he he gets the job done. You know, he's one of those guys that just kind of understands and has good football instincts. Yep. Uh, all right, we're getting a little bit closer here. TV says one seventy four. I think we're closer to one seventy five, so we should be able to make it. Just recapping a couple things again. Uh, you know, for those of us, uh, for those of you who joined us earlier, we're jumping in here every time the Patriots are about to pick. Uh, we did jump in right prior to the uh, fourth round selection. Uh, where the Patriots took a running back. Um, since then, uh, Evan has had a chance to look a little bit closer at the tape. Actually came away liking a lot of what he saw there. Yeah, uh, and, I, I and don't you really can see like a full back. breakdown. Yeah, and he doesn't love him. You can see a full breakdown of that um, uh, on our on our YouTube channel if you want. But Evan, just give the people a little taste of some of the stuff that you saw uh, that you liked from uh, from uh, Ramondre Stevenson out of Oklahoma. Ramondre Stevenson can play. You know, this is a guy that is a really physical downhill runner, but he shows really good patience. And the one thing I mentioned in the video that we did already is that they really like at Oklahoma to pull offensive linemen. You're going to see a lot of pulling tackles, a lot of pulling guards. The GT counter is basically Lincoln Riley's favorite running play, I would say. And he was really patient behind those pullers to let them set up his blocks kind of do the dirty work for him at the beginning stages of the run and then get downhill and get his pad zone, run some people over. So when I watch him play, you know, he's not as big as LeGarrette Blunt. You know, LeGarrette Blunt was a little bit bigger than him, but I see kind of like a mini LeGarrette Blunt, you know, a guy that's a little bit smaller than that. I think he can pass protect. I think he can catch the football. Is he an impact receiver? No, but I think he can catch the football. 
if I'm Sony Michelle, I, I'm sweating it a little bit right now. You know, I, I'm looking at the at, at that pick and I'm saying, well, my fifth year options that that's gone. You know, I'm definitely not getting that picked up. But more so about his his role on the 2021 roster. I think that's going to be something that if you're Sony Michelle, is going to light a thunder fire under you. The one knock I'll say about Ramadre Stevenson. He did have some fumbling issues at Oklahoma, so they, he that does spell redshirt, right? I, I think I think redshirt for the Patriots usually is pass protection or ball security. It's one of those two things. Whether Rodri Stevenson, if he gets if he gets redshirted, it will be because of the ball security. Yeah. So that was pick four, and again, uh, fourth round pick. The Patriots, since trading up in round two, have stood pat, and it looks like they're going to do so again here in round five. Evan, we did talk about consolidating and moving up, you know, moving around again. You know, it is funny, and and I, this is again, I just want to uh, point out here. Uh, this is uh, our YouTube channel URL here. If you want to go here, uh, we'll have breakdowns of every single player the Patriots pick. We already have them for the first four rounds. Uh, we'll have it for every single player. Uh, that they take from here on out. We did talk about consolidating picks. It's not something uh, Bill chose to do, obviously. He did uh, move up in round two to get a player that they obviously really liked there. Uh, maybe, you know, the best uh, interior defensive lineman from a pass rush, pass rush perspective um, to get him in the second round. It did seem like they were pretty... It, he did seem for by Bill standards to be kind of psyched about that, but yeah. everything else here has been a draft fall to you sort of thing. And that includes right. uh, pick 15 with Mac Jones, which again, our interpretation of, uh, you know, his press conference and the uh, video that the team put out, uh, you know, the, the craft sports production war room video was pretty underwhelming reaction to Mac Jones, which is kind of like, yeah, sure. We'll take him. But again, Stan, Stan Pat here in the fourth, Standing pat again in the fifth round, uh, just letting the and drafting guys from school from the same schools you're familiar with. You almost get the vibe that Bill's kind of like, let's just get this draft thing over with. You know, like when, when it's my turn to pick, somebody wake me up and let me make my pick and let's move on to the next thing. You know, he's it's got always, about he's got about 20, 30 players he, he likes. Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty sure the one he likes here he's gonna get. So he's just like, whatever. Let's just let's go. It, it does, you know, and obviously that's oversimplified. It is things. very oversimplified. Right, and yeah. we, we recognize that Bill Belichick is definitely not actually doing this. But once we get to day three, it does feel like the Patriots have maybe five, six guys left Very on few, board. and they know they'll get them wherever they want yeah, them pretty much. Yeah, right. and, and, and it's really just Patriot type of guys, and, and it's just sort of stacking, okay, you know. we Okay, so the pick is in. It is Cameron McGrone, the linebacker from Michigan. I love this pick. I'm so oh, glad they made this Evan's one. Happy. Right. I am happy. Cameron McGrone, John, on the big board. He was on my Patriots big board for the New England Pats. Really good player. I think that this is a steal at this point in the draft. Somebody that is a stack and shed linebacker showed pretty good athleticism off the ball as well. I knew they were going to get a Michigan guy at some point, right? Bill couldn't go the entire draft without taking somebody from Michigan. If you're looking for a developmental inside linebacker prospect, somebody to play off the line of scrimmage, they just got one in Cam McGrone. I think he's a pretty good athlete. By in particular, I love his downhill ability. I think he can get downhill. I think he can take on blocks. I think he can punch, separate, take a you know disengage, make a tackle. I think he can be, do all those types of things that they like them to do inside. And I also have seen a little bit of flash in his coverage ability and his ability to play in space and his pursuit sideline to sideline. I am shocked that he made it this far. Right. I mean, you had him for the people at home. Evan had him 47th, I believe. Yeah, overall. I thought that he would be in play for them at 96 or 120. So I stuck right. him in there at the so end of the big 47th board. on his big board of potential Patriots type players. Yeah, and again, this big board is guys that they might be able to get um, and and have a shot at. So again, obviously thought very highly of uh, of him. And again. Uh, you did not have um did you you did not have the third round pick in your I did not have Ronnie Perkins I in your, I in your big board right I didn't think Ronnie Perkins would make it to, yeah. to where they were picking at 96 but yeah. uh, this is a you know with McGrone, All things considered Patriots seem to have gotten I mean so if you want to break down a Patriots draft this way outside of the Stevenson pick Mac Jones presumably fell to them. Again, we don't know how much of that was smoke. Uh, they got a first round talent in the second round. They got a potential top 50 player in the third round. Uh, fourth round pick, we're not going to call it a head scratcher, but it's a direction a lot of people didn't think. Here, very late in the fifth round, get a player that Evan liked all as a third rounder, potentially. So again, yeah. that's not bad just from a value standpoint in terms of what's fallen to them. 
Yeah, I mean, I really thought that McGrow would be a much higher up there player. I think the reason why he fell a little bit was just because of the inexperience. You know, at Michigan, and the same thing really happened with Josh Uche too, but his athletic traits were just so off the charts that the Patriots took him early anyways. At Michigan, they have such a pipeline of front seven players at the linebacker position that it's really difficult to get on the field as a sophomore or as a junior. Forget about it as a freshman, right? You're just not going to mi- get on the field at that point. So a lot of these guys like Uche, like Cam McGrown, have to wait until their last year at Michigan to be a regular starter because you got guys like Uche. You got guys like Winovich. You got guys like Rashawn Gary. I mean, the list just goes on and on of players that have played in that Michigan front seven that are now in the NFL. So there's not a whole lot of opportunity early on for those guys. So they have to wait a little bit. They have to wait their turn. McGrone did the same thing as Josh Uche did. It's a limited amount of snaps. It's not a huge sample size. But in that sample size, a really effective player. And the one play that I'll I'll point out was against Wisconsin where he went – from the inside linebacker spot over the center all the way out to the pylon and hit and hit the running backs, you know, stopped them right at the goal line. Th- those are the types of athletic plays that you definitely see flash from Cam McGrown. I think he remind he reminds me personally a whole lot of Uche. And that's why I had him on my big board is because he has the same similar type of archetype. I'm not sure he's as explosive as Uche, Uche. McGrown, Winovich. I mean, Bill Bill really has a type, huh? You know, yeah, just in know. terms of <laughs> especially in terms of schools. He just keeps going back to the well. I think he can cover too. I, I think McGrone can cover. I mean, there are instances where he's dropping off the line of scrimmage and dropping into coverage and carrying tight ends and slot receivers up the seams. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a guy that can that can cover in space a little bit. Again, it's it's really just the inexperience. He's a little bit raw. He's a little bit green because he just didn't have the early down snap, early career snaps because Michigan just plays the veteran guys at, at, at that school. So another guy that you can kind of throw into the hat behind Dante Hightower, along with Uche, along with Jennings, as guys that could potentially be starting inside linebackers for the Patriots once Hightower hangs it up. Yep. Um, so that's what we've got here. Can you, can he crack, uh, you know, can, can, can he play? I mean, this year? I, I don't know, you know. I would say this year is maybe a little bit of a stretch for him to play. I think he could play in the kicking game this year, which might help him get a, carve out a role as a reserve backer slash special teamer. The issue that you have with it is just he didn't have a ton of reps at Michigan. So he is a little bit green. He's going to have to develop some of the things that he does off the line of scrimmage, some of the reads. It's not about the physical aspects. He can definitely be able to kind of do all those physical things. But this is a guy that only made 15 career starts at Michigan. So some of the things that he does in terms of his reads off the line of scrimmage, you know, processing, seeing blocking, recognizing blocks, recognizing rush pass by the running back, being able to mirror guys and things like that without false stepping, without false keying to a puller or false keying to a sliding tight end or whatever the case may be, play action pass. You know, these are all things that you have to work out with a guy like Cam McGrone. But in terms of the ceiling, NFL starter ceiling. And that's why I think this is a great pick at 177. Okay. So that's where we are here. Again, Bill Belichick goes back to defense. We've had interior defensive line, uh, edge, I guess, slash linebacker and another linebacker here. Um, So Bill's definitely stocking up uh, at this stuff. We're looking ahead now. The next pick, I believe, is coming up kind of quick, right? 188? Yeah, 188 and 197. I, I still, I, I don't know. Maybe they jump back up here. We might want to stay on for a yeah, few Yeah, no, I don't think we're going to go anywhere because we're around the corner. So I think we'll just kind of hang out here um, and uh, and uh, and wait it out because either they could jump or they could be picking uh, relatively soon. So again, still some good players here. These picks are very close together. Uh, and any of the ones you mentioned that weren't camera grown, uh, there's still quite a few of those guys in play. Yeah, I mean, they're still good players. And I think the good news is, too, I mean, I love McGrone as a player. I think that's pretty much obvious. But I think what I like most about it is that they didn't take some kicker. They didn't take a special teamer. They didn't take a long snapper. They recognize that there's still talent on the board, and they should be looking at this talent rather than taking, you know, a, a, a kicker or, or taking – some uh, guy, a uh, corner like Avery Williams, who's only going to play on special teams. You know, they, they recognize McGrone can be a, every down inside linebacker for them if he develops into that down the road. So I'm glad that they're still picking players. 
you know, I'm glad that they're still taking guys that can actually have roles here on offense or defense. Right. And again, you're, these are actual football players you expect to contribute. We're not into that specialty phase right. uh, of the draft yet. And of course it could be coming, but uh, we did talk about having a tough time with, uh, with, uh, you know, roster spots, really. Again, you did not expect them to take all these players. No, I didn't. And if you keep drafting it. players of this caliber, you, you, these are players you want to keep. Yeah, I, I am surprised that they uh, that they're not consolidating a little bit more now. They did consolidate. They took they gave away two picks to take did, right. far more. So they maybe they're looking at a board of seven, maybe eight guys that they're now going to draft. Uh, I the reason why I said we should stay on is because I wouldn't be surprised if they take one eighty eight and two forty two and combine those, or one eighty eight and one ninety seven and sneak back up to one eighty one eighty one here to just make sure that they get their guy because that pick two forty two, whoever they take in the seventh round, and unless it's a kicker, he's not making the team. Yeah, he's not making the team. So I think that that's a a little bit of a you know we'll see what happens. You know I I think that they could easily consolidate some more of these picks maybe they they take you know 197 and 242 and move and bridge that that gap from sure. 188 to 197 i don't know we'll see but i it just it feels like there has to be uh you know there has to something's got to give because just taking another guy to take another guy here at the end of the draft that isn't going to make the team it just doesn't seem like it doesn't uses uh well let's talk about current roster and players that may or may not be uh you know seeing as who they've drafted now uh you know just kind of looking at the future of some people they currently have uh what about an Amford e. jennings what about uh a Jawan bentley yeah uh you know uh yeah how do you see these guys i mean you know we're we're not quite in the uh you know, camp casualty portion of our of our off season, but you start looking ahead and you wonder uh, whether some people's jobs might be in jeopardy. Yeah, I mean, with Sony Michelle, you know, Sony I, for sure. But I, I, how about here at the linebacker position? They've 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 brought in a couple of you know a couple as well. Um, and obviously, you have Uche. You, you know, you have uh, when anybody out there you think might be feeling a little uncomfortable these days. The roster right Chase now. Winovich. Chase Winovich. Chase Winovich. And so that'll be surprising to a lot of people, and uh, and, and it's not to the to you know to you or to others to cover the team yeah i mean look at he's entering year three and we know we can rush the passer he's one of the best pass rushers on but the what team else? but what else can you do or on first and second down can you set the edge can you make a, a, an impact against the run i think a lot of people see chase winovich making impacts against the run sometimes because he's jumping gaps right he's jumping inside or right. he's shooting the gap he's making plays behind the line can he shed a blocker can he can, can he, he shed a blocker can he stack hold the point of attack shed disengage make a tackle can he do that and, and that's not something that he's been able to consistently do for the patriots and that's a concern if you're chase winovich if you're looking at his long-term outlook on this team right and a team that you know a, a different scheme that's maybe a little bit more aggressive and is a little bit more of a one gapping front they can take on chase winovich as a four three end or three four outside linebacker and just let them shoot up the field and they're going to be fine with that. Whereas the Patriots, they want somebody that's going to be a little bit sturdier and a little bit stouter, more disciplined. Right. More disciplined. So look, I I, I would have thought that if they were going to trade Winovich, that after they took Ronnie Perkins, I, I don't know what exactly. They, maybe they end up being able to flip. We we talk about wide receivers all the time. May, this is a, just an idea. Let's get maybe, back to the Michael Gallup situation. Yeah, right? maybe they're able to flip Winovich for you know end of camp. Winovich is you know losing reps to Ronnie Perkins or losing reps to Anthony Jennings, and they're able to flip Winovich for a Philip Dorsett level type of wide receiver. Sure. You know something along those lines. I think that that's a, a realistic uh, possibility um, for the Patriots and and also Sony Michelle. Uh, whether I, I think you know. I think Stevenson's probably one, a one-year redshirt type of guy like most Pats running backs, but he's a complete back. You know, and the only thing that you have concerns about is the fumbling. So I, I think that you can see a situation where Sony Michelle is also kind of on the outside looking in a little bit in the roster construction towards the end of the year. Yeah, and again, people here wondering in the chat, you know, Winovich, what kind of value would he have? The answer is not much, as Evan said, a Philip Dorsett type player. You're basically looking at this is a this is an area of, of depth or strength on my roster, and I don't have room for them. And you might have six, seven wide receivers, and you're going to cut one of these guys anyway. So why don't we just swap them and see if this works out? That right. Would kind of deal that you're going to make you're not talking about him as an actual trade chip to go out and get somebody who you would really really want it's really more 
this doesn't fit my roster, but it might fit yours. And that is possible here with Winovich. Whether or not this is something you fully uh, ascribe to, there's also been uh, chatter in the media um, about personality fit with Winovich and the coaching staff. And, and he's addressed it. He said it's overblown. But he is a bit of a, you know. He's a uh, diva. He's yeah. a diva. I, I love the guy. I'm he's not trying a bit to bash him. Uh, and he's a bit of a yeah. oh, he's a re- you know, he's a red light guy. You know, like the oh, the red light, the camera smile. You know, he's a he's a bit of a ham, uh, which is fine. The Patriots don't suppress all personalities. It right. just goes hand in hand with are you doing every single thing we ask of you, and then you can go be Rob Gronkowski and 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 crush beer cans on your head. It's fine as long as you're doing the work. But uh, you know, there's a there's a question of whether or not. Uh, the fit and and and, and or he runs his mouth at the wrong times in the film room or whatever it is. Uh, there's been chatter there whether or not that's that's a guy that they love in the building. Yeah, it's a valid concern, and and nobody likes after he sacks the quarterback or pressures the quarterback. Nobody likes to watch it on the replay on the jumbotron more than Chase Winovich. Like this yep. is a type it's of unreal. guy that every <laughs> single time he makes a sack, you'll see him staring at the end zone, uh, you know, footage of him making the sack. I, I like Winovich. I think he's a really good football. I think he's a good football player. Bill Belichick has said he thinks Chase Winovich is a good football player. Is he the right type of football player for the Patriots? And are the Patriots going to hang on to him on a second contract? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know really if that's ever going to happen here for Chase. Yeah, we are now uh, pick. Well, I think we're on 184. So again, we are going to hang yeah. up to 188. Uh, last few picks off the board here, Evan. Anybody uh, snatched up that you're like, damn, wanted him? No, not really. I, I think we're, you know, pretty much at the point of the draft where it's kind of pick your pick pick your brand, you know, pick your pick the type of, of players that you like and yeah. uh, you know, you're throwing fl- I I'm ecstatic that they were able to get Cam McGrown where they got him. Yeah. I think it's a really good pick. Um and and I you know, I think that that's a that's a good a good move by the Patriots there. Uh, Cornell Powell did go to Kansas City. Uh Semi Fihoko went off the board just now to Stanford. So I guess that those two are ones that you know that I, I definitely have talked about a lot, especially Fihoku from Stanford. Uh those two guys yeah, going Fihoku was one we mentioned. Uh yeah. you know, Hufanga, uh that's a safety. Yeah, uh, Powell, uh, as you Hufunga mentioned, is, wide a, receiver. is a box safety. They don't need yeah. another box safety, so let's be glad that they didn't take him. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they. Oh, they, Gundy, hey. I don't know if you had anybody there, but you talked about some. Uh, is another uh, uh, D back there that went. But uh, yeah, a couple wide receivers here. If anybody's looking to clean up some scraps, there is this, there's still a couple of the receivers we talked about at 177 still here. Yeah, I like She Smith. I love Daz Newsom from UNC. Uh, he's somebody that I've talked about a little bit more so now that we're getting towards the end of things here as sort of that gadget return man that can create with the ball in his hands and be Avery good Williams to the Falcons cornerback at 183. Oh wow, Bill Belichick must be throwing things in the draft room that somebody else took Avery Williams before he could take him at 188. A- Avery Williams is a special teamer in the league that yeah. a lot of people are gonna are gonna. Was this your Slater? This is Slater. Yes. So the Patriots had drafted Avery Williams. You would have heard, oh, he's the next Matthew Slater. You know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do here with this guy. And uh, look, uh, that, that's what I said, though. You know, I'm glad that they went with a with a guy in McGrone who can really play and isn't just going to play on special teams is going to have a chance to develop a role in on defense. I think yep. all three downs, potentially, yep. he's got that type of athleticism. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have a little bit more time for the Patriots pick. Uh, let's see some names on the board here. Uh, again, we're seeing a lot of the same ones. Uh, you know, Kay Johnson again, uh, C. Smith. Uh, someone asked uh, Grimes. Which uh, Grimes? Trayvon Grimes. Trayvon Grimes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we're, we're, like I said, we're getting into like, guy, who have you heard of at this point, right? Yeah. You know, let's throw out names that we've heard of. Uh, Trey Smith from Tennessee, the guard is still there. I, I don't know. They need another guard, but uh, he's someone that it has good tape that, that, you know, really should be off the board already, probably. Uh, they did Deontay Brown from Alabama. They're, they're sticking to their, to their programs. Deontay Brown is Michael on winning two. 2.0, you know, just an absolute massive human being that has some weight concerns, obviously, but you get him 
down to 330, 340 like they did with uh, they did with uh, Onwenu, and, and he can play. He can be a people mover. He can be a bulldozer at guard. I love Ardarius Washington from TCU as a safety prospect. He's Miles Bryant, right? He's five foot seven, five foot eight, something like that. Super yeah. undersized. That's why he's still here. I think in a normal year. He's probably going undrafted and signing as a UDFA. But in this year, you know, there's not a whole lot of depth in the draft. So I don't know how many UDFA, true UDFAs yeah. they're going to be. So maybe somebody like Ardarius Washington ends up getting drafted uh, just because of that. Um, Frank Darby yeah. from Arizona State. I don't know if they want to go with another Sun Devil at wide receiver. But uh, look, uh, there's uh, I think there's a, a lot of talent to be had still here if they want to grab another player that can uh, that, that's not a special team type of guy. Uh, ben Mason fullback goes uh, to the Ravens. Okay, so we have Williams and we have Ben Mason going basically in back-to-back picks here, and Bill Belichick is livid. He is livid because Ben Mason is Mason was another one that a lot of people had seemed to have, like, have Patriots like written all over it. James Devlin 2.0. You know, yep. he's like a traditional fullback. This isn't yep. Dan Vitale or Dalton Keene. This is a traditional bulldoze, you know, sledgehammer up the whole type of full a fullback. Yeah, well, there is uh Johnson is back this year, correct? Yes. He had, uh, he, signed his, uh, he signed his he signed his uh, exclusive rights his, tender. His tender. Yeah, so he's yeah. going to be back. So yes. he is back. So you know, again, uh, but this is another one that uh, you know, a lot of people had earmarked as a potential patriot at this spot in the draft uh, that goes. You do talk about you know, and again, you never know who's on Bill's board, but you do say if there's seven, eight guys there, and presumably. Two, two of those guys might have gone right in front of you, you start to gnash your teeth a little bit. You know, like, ah, uh, yes. you know. So uh, it, it, you, know, yes. you, you don't know what, what he wanted, but these are a couple of guys who, again, uh, seem to be very Belichickian sort of picks. Um, let's see where we are here, just updating. Uh, the Chargers have made their pick at 185, so we are getting inching closer. Linebacker Nick Neiman. Okay, so uh, another linebacker goes here. I, I like Cameron going a lot better than Nick Neiman, so uh, good riddance on that one, I think. But uh, yeah, another linebacker prospect. I, I think another guy you'll see go soon here at the linebacker position is Patty Fisher, who some people like at that spot too from Northwestern. But I think McGrone's got a whole lot more athleticism and uh, just coverage ability and range uh, for that position. So a good, uh, it was a really nice pick for the Patriots and. Uh, I'm interested to see what what comes of this 188 pick. This guy, this has to be like uh, a D3 special teamer that I've never heard of. Like we still haven't gotten to that point of the draft. Like the fact that I, I've heard of every single pick that they've made so far, there's something wrong with Bill Belichick. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they're like he, he's he's lost his fastball with you know throwing curveballs at us. I it's guess. my favorite moment of every draft where he drafts a player and it takes all of Patriots Twitter. <laughs> a few minutes to say a word yeah. because everyone's like, wait a second. And starts rifling through their pamphlets. Like I, w I don't have this guy in my top 500, you know, like yeah. how, where, did, where did this guy, we, is haven't, this, we haven't been, gotten is this there a yet. made up it's name? Not, right. It hasn't happened yet. So I, I'm, 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 I'm excited that that's happened. I mean, look, they pick a guy that was on my big board at 177. I'm over the moon. You know, like that. those guys are guys that I expect to be in the third or fourth round at the lowest, and we're still talking about a guy on my big board at 177. That's great. You know, and so I, I think that that's – it's interesting. It's they haven't thrown that that what the heck is this guy? You know who, who's this guy? Who's the yeah. yeah the Justin Rohrwasser of this draft has not has not happened yet. So yeah. well, it's coming. It's coming. The, the Jets uh, 186 pick is in here. Let's see who we have. Uh, what have you thought of that? What the Jets have done so far, Evan? So I'm not the biggest Zach Wilson guy, but I'm. Is it just because of his bro prom picture? What did you think of him before that? No, no, it's nothing to do with the prom <laughs> picture. Uh, the reason why I'm not the biggest Justin Will uh, Zach Wilson guy, Justin Wilson, is because I, I felt like he was a guy that made a lot of really good throws on the move. You know, rolling out to his right, throwing downfield bombs across his body. But when he had to, and BYU had a great offensive line, and they hit, played a terrible schedule of defenses. 
was last year. Like, they were, he didn't play a single good defense. Right. So when they play all these crap defenses, nobody's touching Zach Wilson, right? He's he's protected every single time. And everybody talks about this as a knock on Mac Jones, all the talent around him, all the pass protection around him, the receivers around him. They That was the same thing for Zach Wilson. And anytime you see this guy, Zach Wilson, get pressured – his feet start to get wacky. You know, he starts to get a little bit of happy feet in the pocket. He doesn't step, you know, set and step forward and point to his target. And, he, and the ball wanes on him a little bit, the accuracy, uh, the arm strength. So operating not even from a pressured pocket, but just a muddied pocket, right? Just with trash around him and people flying around him was something that I was really concerned with is Zach Wilson projecting him as the second overall pick in the draft. Obviously he's a good prospect, but as a second overall pick, uh, those are the things that you look at that you're concerned about with him. But other than that, I think the Jets hit the draft out of the park. Like, I really do. I, I think the Jets have had a really good draft. Elijah Moore, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker, uh, they took uh, Michael Carter. They snuck up in, in to take the running back there in the fourth round. The, the, I think there was a lot of really good picks that they made uh, this this week, uh, this week weekend. N- n- not a big as Zach Wilson fan, but other than that, I, I think that they, they did a really good job in this draft. Be- better than Miami, that's for sure. Yeah, and why, and why is that? I feel like Miami took some risks. You know, yep. Miami took a guy in Jalen Phillips, uh, and they took two injury-prone players. They took Jalen Waddle and Jalen Phillips in the first round. Jalen Waddle is coming off the ankle fa- fracture. That's a concern. And, and then Jalen Phillips is a guy that's battled injuries his entire career from UCLA to Miami and the transfer and everything. He's been an injury-riddled problem. So they took two guys in the first round that have tremendous upside. But I don't know if they necessarily have two guys that are going to to, to be able to stay healthy or play a ton. And, and that's definitely a concern. Okay. Uh, the Jets took a safety. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. I think uh, I think we're – the And the Pats, I believe, are on the clock. Yeah, I think the Patriots are on the clock. Yeah, because the Atlanta pick is in right now. So, yeah, I believe the Patriots are on the clock. Okay, cool. So here we Atlanta go. Atlanta took Frank Darby from Arizona State. I, I quickly mentioned him as a wide receiver. The you Patriots did. Could be interested in. I'm all set with going back to Arizona State for a wide receiver after Nikhil Harry. Now, the, we, can, we can move on to a different uh, school to take a wide out prospect at. But there are definitely some people that liked Frank Darby as a day three prospect. So, look, uh, you know, maybe that, that was somebody that – that they could have been interested in. Uh, obviously, they've drafted. You don't trust the source before. at this point. No, yeah. don't trust it. And a lot of the reason why is because these types of offenses at Arizona State are very much kind of simplified offenses. They're simplified passing systems, and that's concerning, right? Because with Nikhil Harry, for example, he was fade, dig, underneath crosser, screen. That those were like the four routes he ran at, at Arizona State. Brandon Ayuk, PFF had some ridiculous stat. Brandon Ayuk's going to be a good player for San Francisco, but they had some ridiculous stat that like 80% of his production came on three routes, right? And that's the type of a system that they run there. So it's a very simplified passing system. You take players from simplified passing systems, it's why I'd be concerned about Taylor Wallace from Oklahoma State in New England. You come from a simplified air raid type of passing system where you're an outside receiver and you run three routes the entire year and you're slant, dig, go the whole year. I mean, that's not going to work in a system like New England's. All right. So, again, the Patriots are on the clock here. Pick I am 100% expecting to have no idea who this player is. So, that's, we'll see. It's, it's hard to stump Evan Lazar. And if the <laughs> Patriots do it, um, I'm. Uh, it took I'm, to the uh, sixth round, so I, I, I'm yeah. Cold. This is, you're, you're you're hanging in. You're doing all right. Um, yeah. But again, 188 Patriots on the clock. A uh, few players out there. Evan still likes not just as special team contributors, but actual uh, you know players who might be able to play uh, and make a difference here. And again, that's not a bad thing when you get to this point in the draft. So the ta- the Patriots took Josh Bledsoe. Uh, okay. It was a safety, basically, I would say, from Missouri. Uh, I would call him a safety. He's going to be listed probably as a defensive back by them. Uh, somebody that I thought was going to be more of a box type of player. Maybe they feel like he's going to play someplace else in their defense. So I guess we'll see. Is this uh, one of these I, linebackery, linebackery sort of, uh, of safeties? Slot. Yeah. Maybe they feel like he's more of a slot. I, 
look, they they love these types of guys. I, I don't know why. I mean, look, they, but they have Jonathan Jones. They have Duggar. They have Phillips. They have uh, Jalen Mills, who they signed in free agency. And now they have Bledsoe, who I definitely pegged as more of a safety nickel. But he's a strong, thick-framed guy good communicator in the back end, uh, physical jamming receivers and play style at the line of scrimmage. I mean, look, I, I can read you my full scouting report and it's going to be, oh, well, this makes a little bit of sense, right, from a Patriots perspective. Uh, I, I think he can mirror routes. I think he can play sort of as a slot uh, and be that kind of – This feels like a special teams pick. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. Um very hard nosed run support player as well, right? Yeah. This is the guy that's going to stick his nose in there, take on blocks, make some tackles, you know, things like that. The thing that I had concerns with, and this is going to make Patriots fans not so happy, is I saw some tight hips, right? Tight hips, stiff segmented movements, lack of recovery speed. He was burned a pretty good amount at, there by at Missouri on touchdowns. He gave up a, quite a few touchdowns. This is a guy that is, uh, you know, I don't want to make any comparisons to, to like a Jordan Richards because that would be terrible. Oh. But, you know, he's got some hip stiffness to him. I'm, con- I'm concerned about the hips. You know, this is that, that's things that you talk about in terms of can he flip, run, and carry a vertical route? Can he change directions at the top with a, a fast, shifty wide receiver? He has a little bit of stiffness and, and rigidness and kind of segmented movements to his play style. So maybe they view him as more of like a linebacker safety hybrid so you can take him out of those types of situations. Well, in, in fairness to uh, if you are going to draft someone whose comp is Jordan Richards, um, it's much better when you do it late in the sixth round. In the sixth yeah, round, yeah, I don't want to make his comp Jordan Richards. But it's because fine. That's- no one would have. No one would have had a problem with Jordan Richards if he was drafted in the sixth round. The problem with Jordan Richards, it wasn't his fault. Is he should have been drafted in the sixth round, and he was drafted in the second round. Um, and that's that's that is his story. It's not. He, he didn't ask to be drafted there. He didn't expect right. to be drafted there. It just is what happened. So again, this I do is like the sixth he's round. a physical player. You know, Bledsoe's a physical player. I like that. He comes downhill. He's willing to tackle people. I think he has over 40 tackles last year. He's a physical downhill thumping safety. But my question is, is where do they envision him playing? I, I don't expect with that type of hip movement and his ability, to, he really didn't drop in a pedal too often, right? He's not playing the deep half. He's not playing the deep middle. So it's hard to kind of project that he's going to do that sort of thing in the NFL. So I don't think he's a deep safety. I, I think he's certainly a guy that's going to play closer to the line of scrimmage maybe on special teams is the role. I, I don't know. I mean, look, it, I just named – you got – Jonathan Jones is a pure slot, but he's a slot, slot corner. Jalen Mills, Kyle Duggar, Adrian Phillips, all of those guys. I, I don't know where they project Jawan Williams. Maybe they're going to kick him back outside. But he's a guy that's gotten some reps inside as well. Right. So you're talking about four or five bodies. Miles Bryant's another one that's kind of more of a slot type of player. So that's six bodies now. And now you add Bledsoe, so that's a seventh body. You know, I, I don't even know if a guy like Bled- – they obviously – I think if you take him at 188, you think he has a chance to make the team. Right, I don't think you take a player at this point and and say, and think, oh, he's there's no way we're gonna be able to get him on the roster. So may, maybe they feel like differently about him than I do. I guess we'll hear from Bill Belichick at the end of today of what exactly they envision a role for him being. But I I separate my safeties when I do my evaluations from deep safeties or or what I call hybrids that guys that can play a little bit of everything to slot box only. And Josh Bledsoe is in the slot box only category. Josh. Joshua Bledsoe. There's there's a lot of there's some H's in there. Um, so uh, let's recap where we are again. So uh, we are now through first pick of the sixth round. Patriots are now six picks deep. Wait, are it yeah. six picks deep? Four 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 defense right. four defense two offense um, and uh, nary a receiver taken, which again is. Uh, going to drive some people crazy um, because, again, I know it's, you know, we, we talk about this all the time. That's all anybody wants to see the Patriots draft. Another deep draft, no receiver taken. We already know what the explanation is going to be. We address that in free agency. So Bill's filling some holes and taking some versatile, you know, 
defensive type players, which is uh, his want to do. Uh, at this point, again, you've got the two picks left. I guess consolidating them is still possible. Um, so I think, again, Evan, we might just hang out here a little bit because yeah. we're not too far away from 197, and we'll just kind of right. BS, BS our way through it. Uh, we are fully in the dart throw portion of the draft at this point. But just stepping back, Evan, based off of expectation, uh, on what you were looking for, what you were hoping for uh, the Patriots would do in this draft. And that considers everything, their draft position, uh, their needs, uh, willingness to, you know, possibility of making trades, whether it be to package picks or move uh, picks from the roster. If you had your fantasy land scenario draft of what the Patriots would have done or could have done, is it even close to what they did do? And again, this is what Evan, there's always that you got to think with two brains here when you do the draft analysis. There's what I Evan Lazar would do, and then there's what you think Bill would do. Um, yeah. This this does feel like a what Bill would do sort of draft in many ways, uh, but a lot of them do because again, it's you know, it, it's Bill, and you don't really fully know what to expect. Uh, how does it go relative to your expectations based off what you thought they could have pulled off given their position? Well, I'll say this: Look, I think this is exactly what we typically accustomed to seeing with Bill Belichick. It feels like a Bill draft. Yeah, is that. I, I want Justin Fields. He takes Mac Jones, right? You know, that, that's, that's kind of the, the thing here. But I think the, what we have to acknowledge is that the Patriots were able to stay put at 15 and take a quarterback that has the potential to be their quarterback of the future. Whether he gets there or not, we'll see. But he has the potential to be the Patriots' starting quarterback for the next five to ten years. He does. And they were able to stay put, not trade up, not have to give up a, a ton of picks to be able to do it. And that there's something to be said for that, right? The fact that they didn't need to do go the San Francisco 49ers route and trade three first-round picks and then some to get their guy. They were able to stay – back at 15 and have the guy fall on their lap and that there's something to be said for that and mac jones is an accurate smart good pocket passing quarterback everything that you hear about in terms of what the patriots want i liked christian barmore at 38 a lot i think that that's a good spot for him i was concerned about him in the first round but where they got him in the second round feels a lot better. You know, that's a player that has a really high upside, but right now is maybe just a situational pass rusher. Eventually he's probably going to develop into something more, I hope. And that's, I think, a really big advantage to that pick as well. Ronnie Perkins, uh, take it or leave it with Ronnie Perkins. I think he's a good football player. I think they took a talent grab there. I think he's got some good things about him that the Patriots will like. High motor, good play strength, a good instincts, good ability to play the run and the pass from the edge defender position. Is he an outside linebacker? Is he a stand, is he stand up edge? Is he a hand in the dirt defensive end? We'll see. But I, I think that those three picks are guys that maybe I didn't peg for them necessarily. I mean, I guess I, I did peg Mac Jones and, and Barmore at some point for them in the draft. But I would give this overall draft right now somewhere like a B or a B plus. I, I feel like they could have gone a different direction with the Ronnie Perkins pick and gotten a player at a position that was a bigger need than outside linebacker. And again, but, we're crowded here with the linebacker and the safety situations. This is, I think the criticism is you don't know what these players are ever going to be. What, of course, drafting a linebacker who can play versus a cornerback who can't, there's no real point in doing that. But you know, you're at the point in the draft where a lot of people don't know who a lot of these people are and they just are see the positions and they get excited when you draft certain positions because they right. know they need those things. But you need football players and these are football guys they identified based off of value and based off of where they were going or where they projected. It's hard to argue against the first three picks even if you didn't love the Perkins one per se. Yeah, I, I just didn't love the fact that they took an edge defender. You know, yeah. I just kind of felt like, look, they got so many bodies at that position. Uh, why why take another one there? And wh what are you going to do besides maybe trade Jace Winovich or something like that to free up snaps for Ronnie Perkins? Uh, great, it's great to have competition. Obviously, it's all, it's great to have competition, but we'll see. Uh, the wide receiver thing it doesn't bother me as much as everybody else. I got to be honest, and it's not to make excuses for them, but it, it's really just the fact that. This is a team that is going to run through the tight ends. I've said it since free agency. Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith are your number one and number two targets on the depth chart. Nelson Aguilar is your number three. 
Kendrick Bourne's your number four. Then the back or Jacoby Myers, whoever else is there out there on the field is number five. That's how the pecking order is going to work. Maybe you don't feel like Hunter Henry is worthy of being a number one, but that's exactly what the situation is for the Patriots moving forward. And that's what they that's who they have pegged as their top weapon is a guy like Henry or Janu or the combination of the two. So I don't feel like wide receiver was this huge need. I know we love to take the wide receiver. It's the fun pick. It's I fun. love I love watching wide receivers. You know, every single year I I have more wide receivers than any other position because I love watching them. They're so much fun to watch. They do so many different things. They just have so many great attributes about most of them. So that that's I think a, you know I get it. I get that it's the flashy pick. It's the sexy pick. But I I don't I don't lose sleep over them not taking a wide well, receiver let, in this draft. Let me ask you this question again. Um, you know, of course they signed four, and again, uh, you know, putting in the chat here. Um, they signed four pass catchers. Uh, again, everyone's obsessed with receiver. They signed four people who their primary role is to catch passes. So yeah. they are, they addressed that. They do not have, you know, wide re wide receiver depth as you would want uh, on the team right now because they're lacking uh, outside, you know, guys and playmakers or really any good like yak guys right now. Right. So well, let's see, you know, if they, they, to me, what the, the, Thing that I wanted to see the Patriots come out of this draft with was that shifty yak receiver. Yes, and right? they, Somebody, didn't. they didn't come out with that yet. So if it's not going to be that, then the one thing I would like to see them do is draft an outside receiver with size to compete with Nikhil Harry. Let's exactly. push Nikhil Harry a little bit. Let's draft a Seth Williams. Let's draft a Jonathan Adams. Let's draft somebody that's a big bodied outside receiver so that Nikhil Harry comes to camp with another six foot four receiver standing next to well, him in the huddle. Interesting you know? note. We talked late season. There's two things I wanted to talk about. The Nikhil Harry situation. We talked late in the season of basically just make him a tight, not a full tight end, but just change his role altogether to be basically what a move tight end would be. Right. Um, but now you bring in two tight ends. I, you know, it doesn't seem like that's going to be. So where does Harry make, if he makes an impact here, how does he do it? I guess it's possible he shows up, a, a, a switch goes off in his head, and all of a sudden, whatever it is that he's best at, he's doing it. He's Maybe he's leaner. Maybe he's faster. Maybe he's more agile. I don't know. We don't know what he's done this offseason. I know you talked to him last offseason. I have no idea what to expect from Harry right now. Um, so wh what if he does come back, what do you want him to be in, in year three? Yeah. Because expectations – it's so interesting how expectations in year two were exceptionally high. And I don't think you could possibly have lower expectations here where I just don't think anybody would even bat an eye if he got released tomorrow. Yeah. So I, I think the two things, one, when I talked to him and his trainer last off season, I think the biggest problem that I saw was that they were really trying to work on the kill Harry's footwork at the line of scrimmage to get off of press coverage so that he could play outside receiver. And that's all well and good, but, some guys just aren't going to be these quick guys at the line of scrimmage. Some guys aren't going to be able to do the dance, right? They're not going to be able to to do the to have the footwork and have the agility and have the lateral explosiveness to be able to do those types of things. So instead of trying to make him something that he's not and trying to turn him into this great route releaser at the line of scrimmage, let's let him use his size. Let's let him go up above the rim and play big and play physical. And if they're going to try to do that with him, I would like to see him move inside and ha not have him play as a tight end, not have him play as an H back, but have him play as a true slot. Just receiver. a big slot. Yes, which is exactly what he did at the end of his career at Arizona State for the most part. Right. The big slot. When I spoke to his coach at Arizona State uh, after the Patriots drafted him, the guy that he, Coach Fisher, compared him to Bolden. was An Anquan Bolden. Which would be a dream, obviously, because right. Bolden, tough as freaking nails going over the middle. You know, he was big, strong, physical. I mean, uh, that's a phenomenal comp. Well, What's funny is at the time of the draft, people were like, Bolden, that's it, you know, because right. you draft a receiver in the first round and you want Des Bryant. You don't want Anquan Bolden or you wanted something bigger and better. But, oh, my God, would you take Bolden? Because he was phenomenal in his in his peak years. Right. So when I say moving him to the slot, I want to be clear. I'm not saying that he should be running the Juke series like Julian Little Edelman. Welker, Amendola routes. No. Not at all. No, no, He's no, no, running no. Up the seam. Right. Routes. 
the middle and right. using his physicality. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Go up the seam and throw him a back shoulder. Go up the seam and let him go above the rim and catch it like Gronk used to catch it up the seam. Right. That That's what you want to see from him. If they can do that, because look, we. But for, this is an interesting comment. For a big guy, yeah. he does not play big. At time, yeah, I, I could see that. I mean, they haven't given him a ton of opportunities to play big, I would say. That's just not. It's not a big part of their offense of just let's throw it up to the six foot sure. four guy and see if he can catch it. Isn't it's it really funny though that one exhibition game that he got hurt two seasons ago? That's what they did with him. Yeah, uh, in those that time with Stidham, they just threw it up and he went up and got it. That was an interesting flash of like, oh, they don't have that. That would right. be great. Um, and right. it, and then it never happened again. So I, I don't. No, they they I don't did it in the Ram the Rams it. game last year. He yeah. ran that those two double moves against the Rams last year. One of them should have drawn a DPI, didn't. The other one he caught for over 30 yards. A little stutter and go on the outside. And he was able to go above the rim. He was able to get somebody – because of the double move of the route, they were able to get the, somebody on his back finally and get him to stack down the right. field. Because he can't stack down the field because he doesn't have speed. So he can't run by anybody. Nope. right? So what, what you have – that's my worry about the outside. He doesn't have good releases at the line of scrimmage, and he can't run by anybody. So why is he playing out there? That makes no sense at all. Right. I, unless really, I again, they 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 tried some of the back shoulder stuff with him, you know, working the sideline. It just wasn't. It just wasn't. Didn't work. Right. So I think moving him inside to the slot and making him that big slot, well, little, making yeah. him Anquan Bolden, making him Juju Smith Schuster, you know, just box out, use your size, be big, be tough. That's what they need him to do, I think, moving forward, and maybe they can get something out of him. When they drafted him, his speed did not translate from the college level. They thought that he was going to be a yak guy. A yak guy. Throw pass, screen passes nope. to him. Throw passes to him on the move behind nope. the line of scrimmage. All these types of things that he did against Arizona State, and it never happened. You know, it just never yeah. happened. Let me ask you this question. Uh, someone like Bill Belichick, who spent as much, you know, his entire life just basically mastering the game of football, um, who has to be supremely confident in his ability to recognize a football player, getting dinged with a couple of bad drafts. I don't know whether that affects Bill, uh, whether that affects his thinking. Uh, and in terms of, wait, do I know what it is exactly I'm looking for? Uh, I don't think that he feels that across the board. I do wonder, however, after really not being able at all to uh, hit on a receiver, whether that's something that is in the back of his mind a little bit. It's definitely something that I think they look at and they say, look, let's not bust on another top 100 receiver, right? I I'm not saying that they can't draft wide receivers in the top 100 and they're scared to do it. I don't know about that. But what I'm saying is, is like – why take the risk when you know that it's a difficult thing to project in your system? It's no, you know, it's a difficult thing uh, to to really scout and evaluate as a front office because of the type of offense that you run is so largely different than anything that we see in the college game. The college game now is so much air raid. It's so much Kyle Shanahan West Coast type of stuff. There's just not a whole lot of Patriot type of things going on at the college level. There's not a whole lot of it. So route conversions, side adjustments, uh, coverage adjustments, uh, you know, this, this corner sitting outside of me, I'm going to break inside, vice versa. There's just not a lot of that at the college game. So when the Patriots watch these wide receivers on tape in the college game, they don't see anything of what resembles a Patriot offense. They're not going to see a Patriot route tree. They're not going to see an option route. They're not going to see conversions. They just don't see enough of those types of things, and it makes it extremely difficult for them to project. So in that respect, maybe they have identified that it's a blind spot, and there's really no reason to continue to take risks yeah. with premium picks. Yeah, because you know, I, I, Bill has been very successful – uh, targeting other teams' receivers, or more so, once he sees them at the NFL level and sees what they can do. But certainly in the college game, they've not been able to figure out what it is that's going to translate uh, to what to 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 not just the pro level, but as you said, to their level of what they expect from a wide receiver, which yeah. is a, which is a lot and potentially too much in many cases. Yeah, it's you, not only the thinking game that's a lot in terms of the route running. But then you got to be able to block too, and and you do not get on the field as a Patriots wide receiver without being able to run block. And a lot of these guys in college are so damn talented that nobody is asking Devonte Smith to be a ridiculously good run blocker, right? Nobody's asking Rashad Bateman to go out there and be this stud run blocker. Nobody cares because they throw the foot 
football to him and he scores an 80 yard touchdown. Right. So, yeah. so nobody cares in college that if Kadarius Tony can run block, you know, it no. just, it, it, who cares? Well, they right? come here and they don't see the field and you're like, this guy must suck. Right. You know? And, it, right. and it, so, you know, it's, it's that it's all of the, it's, I mean, certainly under Brady, it's all of the option routes uh, that, that they'd be asked to run and just not be able to grasp all of the complexities of, you know, right. Um, you know, so the and, Patriots and are on the clock. They are on the clock here. So, uh, looking back at the picks made any, okay. Give me your voice. Give me your guy right now. Who do you want? Let's look, you know, look, I, we, we talked about how I'm not upset that they haven't taken a wide receiver yet. I, I still think that there's enough wide receiver talent on the board that if they want to take a swing now on a guy like Shai Smith or a guy like, uh, um, Kate Johnson, maybe, uh, Seth Williams, I mentioned. Why are you want. so obsessed with receivers, Evan? <laughs> if you really want to <laughs> challenge, uh, if you really want to challenge Nikhil Harry with a, a big bodied X receiver that can play on the outside and maybe push him a little bit, Seth yeah. Williams from Auburn, but. But at this point in the draft, uh, it, oh, so they took a guard. They took William Sherman from Colorado. Yes, you would. You got to take a guard once, well, at least one you, guard per draft. So of course the Patriots take a guard over taking a tackle, which is what all of us thought that they were going to do, and they take another guard to add to a position of strength. I, I will say, Will Sherman, I think, can be like your Ted Karras, right? He's not going to be. A, but you a got Ted Karras, who's already backing up. David Andrews, who you didn't necessarily think yes, would be here. You do, but you only have Ted Karras on a one-year deal. For a year, I know, so, I know. Right? So maybe looking at sort of a swing guard, a guy that can play a little center, can play a little guard. I, I'm, I don't remember if, if Sherman has any center experience. I'm pretty sure this is a guy – actually, if I remember correctly, as I'm pulling out of his page, that played tackle in college and is projected to move inside to guard due to the short arms. He's got little arms. You know how the NFL works, right? If you don't have tackle length, you automatically move inside to guard. So the Patriots have been successful with these guys being able to take these kind of undersized tackle prospects and leaving them at tackle right? Or taking a guard like Michael Onwenu and playing him at right tackle. He's got a good ability. I would say the best thing that I saw out of Will Sherman was his ability to work up to the second level and leverage and get underneath blocks and push people backwards. That That's that's a good trait to have in the Patriots system. They want power blockers. I think that that's a guy that can be power blocker. He has good feet. He accelerates his feet through contact. He does the little things right, I think, as a, as a run blocker to be effective there and to move some people. So and I'm again, this is a guy who played tackle in college, but is yes. listed as guard for draft purposes. Right. Because yeah. I think he can get into space. I think he can block on the move. I think he can block up to the second level. I, a lot of things that the Patriots you do ask of their offensive linemen, he checks a lot of those boxes, especially here in the sixth round. So I, I'm not going to sit here and say that the Patriots, that this guy isn't any good because the Patriots hit on day three offensive linemen all the time. So, so you know, they are great at scouting offense. I would, in mind. fact, say this is one where you should feel like, again, th this is an area where, as you said, a high, high hit rate, not just guys who can play, guys who end up being starters, guys who end up signing big contracts somewhere down the road. I mean, right. they, they, are, they, they, they do hit here. So it is interesting, um, you know, and uh, you, th this – this is the opposite of how you feel about them drafting receivers, drafting offensive linemen. I am never going to sit here and say that I have any clue about offensive linemen compared to the Patriots front office. They yeah. scout offensive linemen better than any organization. Yes, in it's, not, it's amazing. And so they hit everywhere, which is right. also why, uh, you know, I feel taking one early. Uh, unless you have that premium left tackle sort of thing where right. you're like, this guy's going to be my anchor for the next 10 years. And they took that shot with win, um, you know, and we'll see, we'll see what happens there. You got decision time coming with him as well. And this is, uh, you know, another reason why you might need to stockpile this position. Um, but you feel like they can hit up and down all over. And it's always with guys like these, you know, yeah. um, the, especially the, these tweeners that the people, tweeners. Exactly. Yeah, right. Where, where are you going to play him? You know, is he going to be a tackle? Is he going to be a guard? Most people, like I said, peg him as a guard because of the arms. He's got short arms and that's, that is what it is. But I, I think the short arm thing, 
sometimes the Patriots, per, I think, take, they think that's a little bit overrated, right? They sit here and they say, okay, I mean, yeah, I get it. He's, he's got short arms, but can he? Can, does he have the footwork? Does he have the power? Yep. Does he have the play strength? Does he have the anchor ability? Does he have the ability to sink his hips and coil and block people off the ball in the run game? If he can do all those types of things, then – Sure. I mean, what? Yeah, I, I think it, it's it's a successful uh, player for them, whether he plays guard or tackle. And the Patriots kind of get these guys in the room and say, okay, you know, let's see, let's see what our line coaches can do with him. Uh, let's see what the you know the the training staff can do with him in terms of some of the things that he has got to work on, and let's move forward. You know, it, it just it, it really seems to me like they they find a lot of these guys, and I, I think that this is another guy that and Will Sherman who's got some potential. You know, he's got some pop on tape when you watch him play. So I I don't know where they're going to play him. I don't know if he's going to be a guard or a tackle. I don't know if they care at this point. Right. Again, if you find a player at this point in the draft who who, who makes your roster, it's a win. Um, and uh, based off of their track record, drafting at this position certainly is. Patriots, again, have one pick left. It is a seventh rounder. And again, didn't do any of the trades, didn't consolidate, didn't move up. We'll see what they do here uh, with the seventh round pick. But again, this might as well be an undrafted free agent flyer. Chances that whoever they draft here coming up makes the team seems fairly remote but i would say up until now and up until this pick uh i think the expectation is that they got some players here um that are absolutely in the mix for uh if you know if not roster spots uh, actual playing time i would just say look i i think they're going to pick up a receiver or two in undrafted free agency yep. that if we pick pick them in the 6th round versus picking that picking up that player as an undrafted free agent does it really matter? Like no. we're gonna we're gonna have all these stats come out that say, oh, the Patriots haven't drafted a wide receiver, you know, other than the Keel Harry in the last three or four or five drafts, whatever it is. But if they end up picking up Kay Johnson in undrafted free agency, who I had as a draftable player, then what does it matter whether they picked him in the seventh round or they picked him up as a priority free agent? You know, yep. it, so at this point in the draft, all of these guys are basically end of the round guys, the end of the draft guys. Some of them are going to be priority free agents. I think there's going to be a lot of talent still on the board here uh, that they can pick up at, as UDFAs. And it's not going to be what everybody wants, but at least they get those guys in the building somehow. Yep. And so uh, that's where we are right now. We'll recap it just one more time before we wrap it here. Um, Patriots take a guard here, 197 overall, uh, Will Sherman. Let's look at the whole board. Uh, obviously, we know Jones, Barmore, Perkins, but today, day four, Ramondre Stevenson running back out of Oklahoma, Cam McGrone, linebacker, uh, Michigan, Joshua Bledsoe, safety, and then just now William Sherman, a guard, one pick left, round seven, 242, and that would wrap up the day. Uh, I do want to let everybody know uh, once again that uh, – all of our uh, Patriots draft prof profiles, Evan Lazar's draft profiles, uh, will be, can be found on our YouTube uh, channel, uh, Patriots Press Pass. Uh, so go check that out. We've got everything, uh, you know, all of the picks up until the ones we just talked about being made here. But we've got all of those uh, up right now, and you can go check those out. Evan goes a little bit deeper dive into uh, the caliber of player uh, and what to expect for them uh, from them, uh, you know, this season and beyond. So go check those out uh, right away and subscribe to the channel for all our exclusive Patriots content. Follow Evan Lazar on Twitter and of course clnsmedia.com uh, for all the write-ups and extensive uh, you know, film breakdowns that he's done and he's going to continue doing on all of these players. Uh, and we're not even close to done. As you mentioned, we've got the seventh round. Then there's going to be a whole bunch of undrafted free agents. And this is where Evan gets really geeked up because these guys are fun. There's some. There's always a guy or two in there that's very, Diamond very intriguing. In rough. And, 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 and certainly the Patriots have been successful there in the past. So, you know, uh, there's going to be an intriguing name or two that we're going to want to talk about. So stick with us tonight. And then tomorrow when those names start flooding in, we'll have a lot more stuff uh, on uh, all of the Patriots rookies here. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and that's going to do it for now. We'll try to pop on again right at the end of the draft and put a bow on everything. But until then, for Evan Lazar, I'm John Zanin.